Um, yes. The topic of anger is also my topic today, and I was very glad that the previous uh, questions were about it. You were talking about transmutation of anger, and also about surrendering. And what I'm asking myself is, I feel this tension you were talking about. I feel it. I feel like I'm holding back. There comes this thought that it needs catharsis, like expression, going out, screaming out, punching into a boxing sack, I don't know. You were talking about this identification of this emotion. And Ma is pushing, Kundalini Shakti is pushing. So I don't know, is it the transmutation you were talking about, this identification, letting it out, and then come back and contemplate about love? Oh, how does this transmutation work? Like, yeah. I did not use the word transmutation I'm with sorry. anger, because transmuting anger would be acknowledging its existence as connected with your system. And if you acknowledge this is my anger, then the battle is lost. It has to be a refusal to accept that that thing emerges in you first. It does not emerge in me. I understand people say, well, but that's like you're convincing yourself about it. Maybe you are, but that's the practice taken up here. It's saying, no, this anger is not mine, and I will push it out from the system. With, see, in your case, because you have an active Kundalini movement, which has caused you a lot of pain, from what I remember, aren't you the one who had this pain in the side? Yes. How is it now? Is it better? Um, I, I, um, no, actually not. I, it was better, no, when you were here? Yes. And what did you do after that? You turned up again, I thought you were mm. going back somewhere to where you came from? Yes, I traveled um, over the north of India and I also did the practice, not daily. I bent, I did it. Um, but I'm, I'm honest, it, it really didn't work, if, if I'm honest. But when you were here, it had disappeared fully, right? Yes. So no, not fully, not, I'm sorry. Because you said it, that's why, I, I, I don't know what the truth was, but what you had said is that you were having this heavy pain on the right, Yes. and then you started this bending practice, and yes. we were speaking about it in the satsang, and then at one point you said, now it's not there anymore. No. That's what I remember. Okay. okay, no, then I have to bring clarity yes. to this. So it, it, um, it calmed down. It subsided. Yes, but it was, it's, wasn't completely away. And yeah. then it reappeared again? Oh. Yes. I don't know if I actually said this to you, but I've said it to others. People like yourself who have the Kundalini disturbance have to look at it as something that has happened to them in order to break down the ego, because the ego is too big and it has begun to actually harm the system. Mm. So most actions undertaken have led the system into so much suffering that at one point, a small action you undertake will trigger the Shakti to start disturbing. Sometimes I actually wonder, because I've had many people, hundreds actually, maybe even, yeah, not thousands, but hundreds, where the Kundalini is disturbed, they come here, they sit here, it subsides, most of the time it disappears completely. And then I'm saying to them, you know, wait a bit, don't give in again to the desires, to the ideas, to the wishes. You're here for a few days, you're here, stay as long as you can, let the experience settle. In the cases of most people here, and we have them all on video, so I, I, I know for a fact that it's not uh, something in my memory that has gone wrong, it actually goes away, but then the ego starts to rise again. And it just slaps through and it comes back. So technically, and I'm not saying this because I want to, you know, put you down, I really am not, but very technically you should have stayed here 
for a few more days. Let it, let it consolidate, you know. And when it consolidates, then after that you take the steps that need to be taken. That anger issue that you brought up, these are all those peripheral expressions of a system which is resisting the truth of its existence. So you're, if you go into surrender, the anger is gone. But you're resisting the surrender practice because it's too... On one level, it also will take away this thing you have, you know. Like there's a subtle egoic resistance to anything that will take that away because that's something to hold on to. It's a, it's a, it's a game the ego is playing. If there is anger in the system, and especially if the Shakti is, is, is disturbed and creating pain in the system, it is a clear message to you, without any doubt, to bend. And it's not a practice, oh, I'm going to bend down now. It's not that. It is a deep devotion to the Truth. It's not only a physical thing, where you go on your knees, you stretch your arms out and... and it's about offering this system to the Truth. Else, the Shakti will make you do it. And then it will be very painful if you don't take the surrender route. And I'm not saying to be in this satsang, but the approach cannot be a, a, a sort of a... a utilitarian, material, uh, a rational approach. It has to move now into devotion, into that emotional state of being in surrender to the Truth of your being and refusing the ego. So, um, I... You were, you were talking about my cultural heritage and the Abrahamic uh, difficulties and you were... I... you were right and um, it was... It, it is challenging and when you speak I feel like it's about that accepting like I'm God and... No, not accepting that you are God but accepting that the Divine or the, the Truth is at the center of your being, impulsing this body and this system, so you cannot be a sinner. You fundamentally cannot be a sinner. It is a, it is a lie that has been thrust upon many generations in order to manipulate, control and instrumentalize those generations in the interest of uh, greedy capital and religion and that, that nexus between the two. So, it's not that you are God, but that at the center of your being is the Divine and, and, and if you are in surrender to that, then you are living a life of Truth. So yes, it is that Abrahamic inheritance, no question, but that can be put aside for the moment, because here we are dealing with physical pain, we are not talking about even emotional pain. So the first thing is to bend and ensure that that physical pain not just subsides, but disappears. You can't do anything if the body is in pain like that. No? Okay, so if I can call back my question from, from the beginning, is this the practice you were talking about? It's surrendering to the Divine, as you say. That's the... You were not... Say, but what was the word you were saying? Not the transmutation. The truth, the no, truth. No, I mean transmutation, not, it wasn't transmutation. Transcendence. O of that, that what? It goes up, that it goes up and... That was with regard to the sexual energy. Yes. That it is pulled up and it is thus transmuted. With anger it is not a matter of transmutation okay. because that means that you are acknowledging its presence and, and that means that you are saying yes to the ego. So you can't transmute something which you don't want in your system. What you're, what you're saying is that anger is not something created in this system. It is something extraneous to the system and it enters. And so you refuse it entrance into the system. 
And you can do that easier if you bend down, if you bend and surrender, bending, bending, bending. And what happens then is that the Shakti, the Shakti also quiets down because the moment the ego gets big, the Shakti starts. Mm. So if the ego is quiet, the Shakti is quiet. But where is the resolution to actually take up that state of devotion, that state of bending? That, without that, it will only get worse, no? It cannot get better if the ego is given into. In fact, this huge increase in Kundalini disturbances all over the world is, a, let's say, a transformative attempt to actually propel a larger number of people into deeper Self-Realization, because they have no choice. Since they're not doing it any other way, then they make one little yoga posture wrong, and then it's done, and then it starts. So for you, that is lifelong, You've, you're in surrender and surrender and, in, and you cannot go with what the ego wants. You have to ask, you have to tune in, and it's also a very interesting way to live. It's empowering, you know, you become stronger, and the Shakti will not cause you pain. You can practice it and see. If it doesn't resolve anything, for you, then you try some other practice, some other path, maybe that is better for you. You know what I mean? Yes. Because there are different paths to the Truth, it's not just one way, this is a way that is spoken about here. Thank you. <laughs>